Welcome to the Breakfast Leadership Show, where we interview global thought leaders on business, leadership, and life. Here's your host, keynote speaker, best-selling author, and chief burnout officer of the Breakfast Leadership Network, Michael Levitt. Welcome back. I've got Stephen Lefkoff on the line. Stephen, how are you? I'm doing well, Michael. How are you? I am great. I am great. Um, you do some interesting work in law. So tell a little bit about yourself and, and then we'll dive into this awesome work you do. You bet, man. I'm excited to be here and thanks for your time and, and for your audience's time. This is going to be really fun. I, I am an attorney in Atlanta, Georgia, but I'm not your average attorney. Um, I started uh, just a few months ago, a program called Gavel powered by Small Claims Academy. And it's an online coaching course to coach individuals and businesses through the rules, practices, procedures, tips and tricks in small claims cases so that they can go do these cases themselves. And it's something that I have launched after watching people in court over the last 10 years of practicing law, lose cases that they should win, even win cases that they should win, but not win, let's say, as much money as they were seeking, or it would take much longer than it should take, or they just didn't know what they were doing. And there are significant consequences in court, even though it's a court designed for the people, they're still expected to know the rules. And it's hard to know what you don't know. And it's hard to learn that if there's no program available. So that's why I launched Gavel to teach people how to do this so that they don't have to pay money for an attorney to go represent them in smaller cases. So, which is interesting because from first observation, it's like, well, wait a minute, you're trying to put yourself out of work because people would hire you to represent them in small claims court. But the term small claims means it's a small claim dollar wise, which would mean that they, they want to keep costs low, which means if they if they want legal representation, then of course, you know, they could be paying more in legal fees than what they could be getting back, depending on the size of the claim and what you know what they're arguing about. So, um, what what drove? I mean, obviously, you, you explain why you you created it, but um, what's been the feedback so far? I mean, it's it, it, I'm guessing a lot of people are going, "Wow, this is amazing! Thank you for this." But I'm, I'm curious what the feedback's been so far. So the feedback's been excellent. It is a, I've prepared over 70 courses or 70 lessons broken down into three courses, pre-trial, trial, and post-trial for each step in the process. And those, those lessons, each one is an animated video. So you're not looking at my face, you're hearing my voice narrate it, but you're not watching me just talk like a video conference. They're animated, they're entertaining. Uh, they're very, very, very informative and they cover everything from why the small claims court exists and the history and then into the lawsuit, the answer, deadlines, arguments, witnesses, mediation. Um, We go through opening statements, closing arguments, who needs to be there, how to subpoena a witness, all the way through to the end to presenting your case at trial and then appeal and collection. And the feedback's been excellent. I mean, this is, think about it this way, Michael, this is historically have been not just an underserved market, an unserved market. I mean, there are, you think about attorneys and most people think attorneys are um, in high rise buildings with marble floors. Well, let me tell you, small claims cases aren't paying for marble floors in an attorney's office. They're just not, like you said, they're smaller cases. And so even those attorneys that do these cases, which are very few and far between, can't charge a whole heck of a lot because like you were alluding to, the economics don't make any sense. So instead of trying to figure out a solution, attorneys historically, maybe they their first year or two out of law school, they take these cases to just get experience, but then they stop. And so what happens is you just have no attorneys that do this kind of work or very few, and certainly none that are very experienced. They've moved on to, to bigger cases. So this market, which has been unserved completely, now has an option where you as a person or a business owner can take the course and learn how to either pursue your case as a plaintiff or defend your case as a defendant without having to pay the high cost for an attorney to do that. And so, and I, that was something I wasn't aware of, but it makes perfect sense that because of the fees that attorneys would normally need to charge in order to run their business because it's a business. I, I always try to remind people of that. It's like attorneys 
are in business, just like your accountants are or your doctor or your mechanic or the person running the grocery store or the, you know, the restaurant you go to. They're all running business, so they want to make income so they can provide for the family and all that kind of good stuff. So the fact that you know, there wouldn't be a lot of attorneys being able to do this or you know, seeing basically junior level or you know, first couple years out of law school kind of thing, it's, I can see where a lot of people could be going, you know what, I'm not actually getting the best representation here, even though I've hired representation because you know, they just haven't had enough time to practice law and may not understand all the nuances of a particular case. Yeah, think about it like your business owners and, and other folks that are living life right? You know your life better than anybody does. And if you think about it in terms of a legal case, you know your case better than anybody because you were there, right? Whether it's a breach of contract or whether it's a car repair gone bad or whether it's a a, a contractor that didn't show up to your house or whether you're being sued for a credit card dispute or a whole handful of different things, you know the facts of your case better than anybody. And that includes attorneys, especially in small claims cases where attorneys just the economics don't make sense for them to put as much time and energy into your case that they would say a $2 million fill in the blank type case, right? It just, I mean, just just human nature, right? When you're talking about a three or $4,000 case, it's not going to get the same attention. So in a lot of time, in a lot of these cases, you as the individual going through the case, you are your best advocate. And hiring an attorney is helpful and it's good to know somebody or to have somebody in court that knows the rules. But if you learn the rules yourself, and as I said a minute ago, you are the best advocate for your case, that combination gives you the best shot of succeeding in court, in my opinion. And that's the biggest thing. When you go to court, I would hope that you'd want to win. If you don't, I'm a little, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a little concerned about your mental well-being. It's like I'm going to court because I want to lose. For what? You know, and I'm, I'm sure there's, I'm sure as with anything, there's reasons why people would want to take that angle, especially if it's a thing where they would have to go to jail for something. Maybe they want to go to jail. I who knows? But uh, so, what are some of the you know common cases that you would see in small claims court where you know people would benefit by utilizing uh, these trainings and, and lessons that you've created? So that that's a great question. They really run the gamut. So here in Georgia, where I am, the limit is fifteen thousand dollars in the small claims court. Other states have limits range. I've seen some as low as four thousand, as high to twenty five thousand, and they're all in between and they're various. It just depends on your state. Um, but here I can speak to Georgia because that's where I practice, but they, they cover every, pretty much everything that falls under that limit. Everything from slip and falls, car accidents, car repair cases, like I said before, contractor disputes, uh, loans that weren't repaid, credit card and collection cases. I mean, you name it. If it, if it's a if it's a monetary claim, meaning a money claim, then it fits in that in that area. Now, one thing to caveat, the small claims courts don't handle federal issues. So an example for your listeners, like bankruptcy, right? It might be a smaller bankruptcy case, but that's not in the small claims court. Same with probate, same with um, divorce and alimony and child support cases. Again, here in Georgia, I'm speaking to, I don't know every state and how they operate their, their family law cases, but here in Georgia, you have to go to the superior court if you're dealing with anything relating to a family case. And sometimes those are only five or $6,000 in back child, child pay, right? Or child support. So it, it doesn't necessarily mean that the number's higher, but that's not a type of case that the small claims court here in Georgia at least would address. Well, thank you for that clarification. And um, uh, personally speaking, I, I, I do wish that uh, divorce was a uh, small claims, <laughs> because, <laughs> but uh, I'll leave it at that. Although I love, I love my attorney. Um, she's awesome. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, but that, that makes sense because a lot of people think, well, it's this dollar amount, but there's obviously certain types of legal matters that are better served in different courts, you know, family court or, you know, bankruptcy court or any other, other types types of situations. So thank you for that clarification. So uh, you, you bet, you bet. And one other thing, I'll, I'll jump in there real quick on that, because it's interesting. If you think about 
Um, and this is for, for really everybody that's even considering going to small claims court or any court for that matter. The judge is a person and the clerks are people. They don't know everything, right? So when you think about things like family court or uh, issues with alimony and divorce, you think about why that might be in a particular court versus another court. Well, small claims, I, I just said, they handle a whole lot of different things. That doesn't mean that the judge knows the law on every single thing. So it's important, you know, even if you're taking a course or learning about the practice and procedure to take the time to really research your case and learn about your case and the law in your case, because you might be in front of a judge that, okay, you've got the right witnesses, you've got the right evidence, but that judge has no clue what the actual law is and what they're supposed to do in that case. That's a great clarification. Yeah, it's because, and I think this is something where a lot of people, when they talk with attorneys, I say, you know, I got a quick question for you. That's the most dangerous <laughs> phrase on on planet Earth. I've got a I'm quick question. I'm laughing over here because I, I I hear that five times a day. <laughs> yeah, I got a quick question. Mm, and a, another colleague of mine who is an attorney, um, her common response is, "It depends," and that's the best way to do it. It's like it depends because there's so many different variances in a particular situation, whether it's a contract or a dispute or a situation, it's like, okay, what were the circumstances there? Uh, and it, again, it really depends. But I know, you know, people in, in legal or, you know, my original career was accounting and everybody was asking me, you know, tax questions about, you know, all kinds of different things. And I'm like, I was like, 20 years old. I'm like, I'm, I don't know a lot about estates or offshore investing or anything like that. You know, most of our clients are blue collar type of people. Yes, we got some you know executives in the mix, but most of them are blue collar, pretty much straightforward. What are the deductions? Let's, let's maximize on schedule A if we can, and away we go. And that was basically it. You know, they're like asking these Pythagorean theorem types of questions going, I, and it's like here here's the internal revenue code you know there's there's a couple books version i'm sure it's more now it's like here take a read see if you can figure it out <laughs> now 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 you can just say google it but i always tell people and then go go talk with a, an accountant i you know and it was funny there was a uh individual even after i left that field would still ask me questions i'm like dude h&r block you know or just go do something i, I don't know. I mean, I use, you know, a program to do my taxes or I use an accountant to do them now. And it's like, I don't care. It's like, what do you need from me? Here's all the transactions I did. Here's what I do. Make so it as painful as possible or painful. It's, such, painful a good, it's such a good point because one of the things you brought up at the beginning of our conversation was about, Hey, am I taking business away from other lawyers? Right. Am I cannibalizing my own market? by selling an online program and telling people, hey, don't pay me to go to court for you. Do it yourself. And, you know, like you said with H&R Block, there, is, there are so few people and so few lawyers that do this work that, and it's so, it's such a market that doesn't, it doesn't make sense for what, I mean, it just doesn't. The economics don't make sense that I am providing a service that's never been pro provided before. And for all your listeners that are entrepreneurs or that are thinking about you know, future business and how to run your own business and ideas on products and services and all these different things, try real hard to think about a market that's underserved or not served. What is your product going to, going to do for those people? I mean, we all are providing something to people. You have to have a buyer, right? No matter what it is, you got to have somebody out there who says, I want that or I could use that, or I need that. And then, sure, are there products that, that compete directly with other products? Yeah, there are lawyers that compete directly with other lawyers. Of course there are, right? But to have something that where I can say, look, all you lawyers that are already getting calls about these cases anyway, because you have billboards and because you have TV ads and you have radio ads, and you're, you're getting these calls on cases that you just can't take, right? I've now got a solution so that you don't have to say no to your customer. You can say yes to your customer. No, it's not something we do, but I've got the perfect answer for you. And everybody, every customer, every caller, every person contacting you in your business, they don't want to hear no, right? If it's not something you do in a perfect world, they want you to tell them an option, 
No, it's not what I do, but I know somebody. Let me put you in touch with somebody else. And that's the beauty of these podcasts in a lot of cases around the world are the, the availability everybody has to each other, right? I know somebody that can do this for you. And that's really where I'm trying to come in with Gavel is I want to be that person that, okay, you're, you attorney A, this is not something you do but you know somebody who does and you can send that person over. It's the same in every business, in every industry. Everybody who's taking a call should want to have an answer that is, even if I don't do that, I know somebody who does. Yeah, that's um, basically how I run my business as far as if I talk with somebody and they're looking for a referral to something or someone comes to me and says, do you work with you know these types of groups or individuals or not? And I'll say, yeah, I... Some situations I do, many times I don't, but I say, but I know a lot of people through, you know, my network, you know, okay, first, you know, where are you based? Okay, you're in Atlanta. Okay, I know somebody in Gwinnett County that does this, and here's, here's here's their contact information, I'll make an introduction, so it's not like a, you know, who's this calling kind of thing. It's like, here's this, I've met them, here's what they're looking for, I thought of you, I'm going to step back now. The two of you can see if you know there's a, you know, an opportunity to work together. It, it, it's a mandate. If someone comes to me with a need, if I can't solve it, I'm going to find out who can or I know somebody that can. And when you do that, it just, it, it has such a huge ripple effect on helping everybody out. It, it, just, it just puts so much positive energy out there as far as growing businesses, taking care of needs. Anytime anybody has to deal with a court situation or dispute, it's not fun per se. Uh, it's, you can say uh, that. Um, yeah, there's. I mean, some people, you know, the people that are in the industry would also say eh, not so much fun. <laughs> depending on certain cases, some cases are. You know, it's, you know, and I get that, but you know, some aren't, and it's just a case of you know, the nature of work. That's why they call it work uh, because it's work. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, we're moving things forward and making things better for people, and it, it, it's it's a wonderful approach to do that. So, congratulations on that. Thanks, man. Thanks. I mean, I, I think of things this way, and I hope other people do. I, I don't know. This is not something I read in a book, but I have a family that I go home to every day. And I deal in my industry with a lot of, I don't know if this is a family-friendly show, a lot of jerks. Okay, let's just say that. And you could probably think of what words in my mind right now. But there are a lot of attorneys that are just jerks. And I wonder when I get off the phone with them or when I, the court hearing's over or whatever it is, is that who they are or is it just a persona for the for their work right is that because they have families to go home to right in most in, in many many cases um and and i think to myself like do they go home with a smile on their face is that something that's important to them because it's really important to me that i can go home and tell my family that i did the best i could do today and that i end the day and begin each day with a smile on my face. I mean, I know this is not really what, what we were thinking about talking about perhaps, but, but it's so important to have that smile on your face and to just be a happy, people like to hang out with happy people and happy people get happier. And yeah, sometimes it's obnoxious. Sometimes you're like, how is that guy always so happy, right? How, ugh, it's so frustrating, right? What, when something goes wrong, he smiles. What's wrong with him, right? But, but the reality is, that happiness is how I personally avoid things like burnout. It's how I avoid situations where I'm unhappy or where downward spirals, right? Where you, something triggers you and then everything after that is just making things worse, right? So it's that kind of, the clarity I find is in sort of closing my eyes, giving myself five, 10 seconds, recalibrating and saying, okay, I'm a happy person, right? I'm still standing crazy world we're in right now. 2020 has been just a bizarre year, right? It goes without saying that, that COVID and all this business and the politics, and the, there's a lot to be unhappy about, right? But none of it is in your control or my control. Like really, I mean, it's a choice we make. And so, so that's something that I find real important. I know I just kind of went off on a quite a monologue there, but it's something that to me it is really, really, really a very important thing. And I love that you did that because it, it, it's lessons for us, not just even during a pandemic, but just a way of life. And going in, it's like, okay, I have a skill, I have, you know, or skills that allows me to serve humanity 
in some type of way or maybe several ways. And I'm able to monetize that in such a way where I can provide and do the things that I want to do, which helping those people will then get them to the point of where they can do what they want to do. And when everyone is able to do what they want to do, just life is, is better and, and approaching things as smile. One of the things that I do, even in this world of wearing masks and, you know, keeping distance from people you know, in the condo building that I live in, you know, everyone's wearing masks and you see some people and even though they've got their mask covered, you can still see their eyes and their eyes will, will kind of give a clue as to, you know, what, what's going on with them. Are they happy right now? Are they kind of sad? They tired, fatigued, you know, mad, upset, who knows? Uh, but even smiling behind the mask, you know, your, your face does something and people react to that. They were designed to react to a smile. And even if they force back a smile, that helps them even a little bit, even if they don't necessarily believe it and they, they go back to thinking about whatever they're thinking about. It does help them. And, you know, going about life in that way of going, I'm, I'm going to make today a great day. Cause that's one thing you can do. And how you see things, is is how things are going to be seen by you and if you look at doom and gloom and pandemic and cases and elections and all that other fun stuff that's been tying up all of our time this year yeah well if that's what you're consuming that's what you're going to be or you can look for what can i do what do i have control over i have control over my mood i have control over how i feel how i eat the activity that i do and when I do that, then I'm a better version of me. So that means when I do my work, whether it's in law, accounting, finance, education, you name it, you're going to be feeling better. And if you feel better, you're going to be better. And that's, that's going to be true. And, that's, and, and, and people will, will be attracted to that, even though you might say, why is that guy always happy all the time? The, the question for that person that's asking that should be, you know, why are they always at what's going on in their life that allows them to do that? And hopefully there's an opportunity for that person to go, why are you happy all the time? But not in a judgmental or confrontational way. It's like, I, I, I would love to have more of that in my life. What, what could I do to emulate some of the things that are working for you? And that's, that's a great conversation starter for people to kind of shift their, you know, their approach of how they're looking at things. It's true. I mean, I said a few minutes ago that you are your biggest advocate for your case, right? And perhaps your best advocate for your case. Same is true in life, right? You make the decisions of whether or not you are going to smile. You make the decision of whether or not you are going to be happy. You make the decision of what you say to other people. You are your person, right? Nobody else is making those decisions for you. You're the one watching the news and reacting good, bad, or ugly. You know, you're the one reading the paper. Maybe that's a bad example. I don't know if anyone reads papers anymore, but you're the one reading the, you know, the news blogs online and, and deciding what, how to react to those. You're the one talking to people. And we all, if you think, if you take it even a step further, and I know I'm getting like real deep and I'm not a real deep person, but it may sound that way. But if you take it even a step further, right? We're all in business to make decisions for ourselves, right? When it really comes down to it, whether or not you want to take this vacation, whether or not you want to hire these people, whether or not you want to work at that company, right? The things that you're doing are for yourself. And, and so it's, it's important to me and something that I tell everybody I can, and it's not my area of expertise. I'm not well read or learned on this, but I just think it makes common sense right? That you choose to be happy, that it's a choice that we make. And if you think about why that's important beyond your own personal life and into business, right? We're all selling something, whether it's a service or a product, it doesn't matter. You're selling something. So even if you have no employees and it's just you as a solo, you know, as a contractor or as a designer or whatever you are, you have a customer. If you don't, I mean, someone's paying you for something, right? Hopefully, knock on wood, right? You're getting paid for something. It's that customer is more likely to work with somebody who's happy than they are with somebody who's unhappy. It, it conveys to your, to your customers, to your employees, to your friends, to your family, et cetera, et cetera. No, I love that. And it, it, it applies to every walk of life and it makes for better attorneys and every other you know, industry and, and career out there, if you approach life that way, you're going to be better 
at it and you're going to be more successful at it because you're not going at things at this beaten down, negative, worn out, fatigued state, which you're going in those types of situations, no matter what kind of work you do, creates the opportunity of missing things. If you miss things in a court case, you could lose that court case. Or if you miss something in filing a tax return, you could be on the wrong side of internal revenue. Um, you don't want to do that. Uh, or all kinds of different things. It, it's just it, when, you're, when you're happy, you're healthy. It's, they both start with the letter H. And, then, and, right. then, um, and, and they, they, they should go hand in hand because they do. You know, if you're happy, you're healthier. Even you find cases where people have a terminal illness, but they have such a positive outlook on life their body ends up repairing itself and everybody goes, how did that happen? It's like, well, you know, it's the energy that you put in yourself and That's say, you know true. what, I'm going to do it. doesn't happen all the time, but it does. And, you know, if you live a happy, healthy lifestyle, um, you've got a better chance to live a very long life and a very long and fulfilled and joyful life. And when you do that, the contributions you make to society, both as in a career or just being a great neighbor or friend or family member or whatnot, it has such a huge ripple effect on everybody involved. It's 100% true. I mean, everything you just said is right on. Awesome. So, Stephen, I've loved your conversation today. Where can people find out more about you and this awesome work you're doing? Sure, Michael. So they can go to www.gavel.legal. That's the site for the Gavel online course for small claims. Um, they can find me. I mean, you can email me. Anyone's welcome to email me. Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N at gavel.legal. I'm happy to continue this conversation with any of your listeners at any time. And for your listeners um, to thank you for bringing me on the show, they can use the code GAVEL2020 for 50% off the small claims experience package at gavel.legal. Well, thank you very much for that, and I hope everybody takes up on that because it's a great information to have. And in, in many of us have had to go through, you know, small claims at some point in our life for one reason or another, and to be able to be an advocate for ourselves and and have a, a good chance to to win our case is definitely something worth the investment. So, Stephen, again, thank you so much for your time and all this awesome work you're doing. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for listening to The Breakfast Leadership Show, part of the Breakfast Leadership Network. Visit breakfastleadership.com for tips on empowering your business and your life.